Good afternoon once again and welcome to the culminating experience here at the 2022 World Ultimate Club Championships. Two down and one. Saturday, Evan Leffler with Katie Killebrew getting you set for Fury and Revolution with Hannah Pendleberry and Robin Wiseman on the call. The mixed final was a bit of a dud. Seattle mixtape roll. The men's final was an exhilarating experience. Hopefully, Katie, we're saving the best for last. These two programs that have tons of history and yet somehow have never played take the sport's greatest stage. I've, we've had a great day of Ultimate here, and this is honestly the matchup that I've been most excited to see and talk about. Both teams full of star power, fire power. It's really just, I think I said about Fury, it's an embarrassment of riches, and I feel the same way about Revolution. They absolutely have the tools, I think, to match up against each other really well, and it's going to give us a really exciting game. Both teams have been relatively dominant in the tournament. In the semifinals, Fury over Phoenix, who won bronze earlier today, over Ellipsis. Revolution had fewer turnovers in their four goal win than Fury had in theirs. And that's really my big question, Katie, coming into this. Can Fury be a little bit more calm and composed with the disc? They're so confident in their defense's ability to get the disc back. But Revolution's not a team that gives you a lot of chances to hold with their athletes and skill that they have on D. Absolutely not. I mean, I, I think both of these teams trust their defenses. They trust their defensive lines. They are ready and, and willing to make blocks and make big plays. Um, but there is, I think, uh, a little bit of a chess match going to be played between these two coaching squads in terms of what they put on defense and how they try to make the other team make a mistake. It's been a tremendous atmosphere all day. The fans uh, have departed the stands not to leave the facility, but just to find some shade because it is really roasting everybody here in the sun. Yesterday on Field 23, Revolution and Ellipsis, two non-North American teams meeting in the semifinals of Worlds. Of course, they had a pregame dance, Katie, they always do. And I mean, you talk about embarrassment of riches. Revolution four years ago was strong. They basically had that team back, but have added Germany's Levka Volchek. Australia's Mish Phillips and USA's Claire Chastain. What do those three pickups mean to Revolution? Well, I think that those three players play all very different styles of Ultimate, and they come from a wealth of background of different uh, defenses, offenses, all sorts of different angles that they're looking at, and I think that really plays into Revolution's hands because it gives them a really wide variety of angles that they're looking at regularly. And I think that, that it also, you know, maybe Colombia might fall into a similar style, but by adding those three players, it really gives them kind of an unknown factor. We've seen them play a couple games on the stream, just re-watching some of these outstanding plays here. Incredible tournament for Eva Weatherall, but Lev Kowalczyk, all smiles for Revolution with Gina Cartagena, who's been the backbone of the backfield for so long. Valeria Cardenas, since the last World Championships, has dealt with a torn ACL, completely reshaped her body to get back in the best shape of her life. The Cardenas twins just turned 23 years old on Thursday, and this could be their greatest moment yet of their tremendous ultimate careers thus far. And then San Francisco Fury. They were broken in the first point in each of their last two games, Katie, but undeterred, they just have so many athletes to throw at you, and they truly wear their opponents down over the course of the game. They do. Fury doesn't run traditional O and D lines as much as they have three lines that rotate through. That gives you a, a bunch of different options to look at, and at least for a D line, if you have the same players with you every time, I think it eventually will help your offense because you know exactly which members of that defensive squad are going to be helping you go the other way. That Don Colton goal tied the game at 11 after Phoenix trailed 10-6, but Phoenix would not be denied. They scored the last four goals of the game, finishing with three consecutive breaks. And today, Fury seeking its second World Ultimate Club Championship, but it's been a while. They won 12 years ago in Prague. Only two current members of this Fury team from a playing perspective, Kayla Helton and Nancy Sun, were on that 
team that won on Universe Point over the Japanese outfit in the Czech Republic. Matty Singh, of course, was also the head coach. But today has a chance to be a truly historic day for International Ultimate, particularly with Mauricio Moore and Aleja Torres and what they have built over the course of the past 15 years in Medellin, Colombia. Today could be their golden moment. Absolutely. I mean, they're, they're looking to make a statement here, and why wouldn't they? I mean, as a coach, you have to have absolute faith in your players, and Mauricio just exhibits that confidence. Every time he talks about his team, he really believes deeply in his players and this program, and he is ready for this match, and I think he just is so grateful to have this stage, right? This stream, there's, there's a huge women's final. Hi, I'm Kayla Helton, and I'm a member of the U.S. national team for Ultimate Frisbee, and I'm competing in the 2022 World Games in Alabama. I used to play soccer and run track. Uh, I turned down a track scholarship to play soccer at a different school and then missed the tryout, so I went out to play some Ultimate, and uh, the first time I got hucked to and I was chasing down a disc was the end of all their sports for me. Kayla Helton all the way down, big layout, and that is why Kayla Helton is a world game player. I had a pretty quick ascent in ultimate, I learned really fast. I was actually in the finals of nationals in college all four years that I was there, and that gave me a lot of confidence that I could kind of put the team on my back and get where I needed to go. Been trying out for this team since 2013 and not making it in 2013 and 2017. This time around, I kind of had made my peace with not making the team, which gave me a certain kind of freedom at tryouts to just show up to tryouts and play my heart out. So at this level, there's obviously a lot of pressure. A lot of us thrive under pressure and the best way to deal with it is just Trust your teammates, trust your coaches, and shut out all the rest of the noise and just play with your team. I'm so ready to go, I cannot even tell you. We're just ready to play that first game and show what we got. Kayla Helton with a chance to both begin and end her Fury career with World Championships. She did it in Prague in 2010. She could do it again here in Ohio in 2022. The women's division has been waged at the World Ultimate Club Championships 11 previous times. There have only been six winners. Katie Fury has done it once. Riot has done it three times. Women on the Verge have three championships, Maniacs as well. Mud got the 2006 title in Perth, Australia. What do you think is going to be the difference today, and which way are you leaning? Well, one thing to take into consideration is the heat today. We are absolutely baking in the sun here, and that turf has been heating up. I was on the sideline for the previous final, and the turf is significantly heating up. It makes your feet hot. Sometimes it can even get so hot, maybe not today, but it can get so hot that it will melt players' cleats, cleats coming apart. So it's, um, I think heat actually makes more mental errors. When you are that hot and you're really in your body, you sometimes forget about the disc or what you're trying to catch or uh, any of those other things. And so I think that for this game, the heat is probably going to play into it, especially after eight days of competing. And all the fans who were in the stands have not left. They've just sought shade. They are underneath the massive stand structures here. And uh, I, my, my phone says 81 degrees feels like 90. It feels significantly hotter. I like that everyone's huddled in the tunnels while they have, but I am sure that as soon as we start this game and the opening poll com comes up, they're going to brave the heat and sunlight yet again to watch this matchup. We are hoping for a classic. We are expecting a classic. Which way? <sighs> I, I honestly think it's going to be close to call. I want to see a close game. I want to see big plays. So I'm going to say... 15-14 Fury. I've been leaning Fury's way all tournament long, but here in this moment, I think Revo's going to do it. And I think they're going to make history. And I think this is going to be the crescendo. And 
the climax for Columbia and Ultimate. I think Columbia and Rev Revolution is going to pull it off, but we just get to sit back, relax, and enjoy it. Katie and I will see you at halftime. After a short break, we will toss it to Hannah Pendlebury and Robin Fennig. They have the honor of finishing our play-by-play -play coverage from the 2022 World Ultimate Club Championships. Fury and Revolution for the women's title coming up. Cincinnati, Ohio, Mason's Atrium Stadium hosts the World Ultimate Club Championships 2022. With the mixed and open divisions decided, we now are going to set our final jewel in the center of the championship crown. And what a gem of a match we have. Revolution of Medellin, Colombia versus Fury of San Francisco, USA. Hannah Pendlebury in the booth with Robin Fennec and Robin, this is going to be a historic match. It's not just historic because we get to call another one back to back in club championships, but because these two clubs have never faced each other. And so we have the best of U.S. women's ultimate with Fury, 12 time champions, and they're taking on the 11 time Colombian national champions of revolution, two teams that have just their own brand of ultimate some of the best known players, some of the best known just clubs in general. You've got Fury with the with their very aggressive, very systematic horizontal stack, taking on revolutions, very fast, very exciting hex style offense. So we're getting to see kind of a new style versus the old tried and true style of Fury with a little bit of tweaks that they've inserted in the last few years to be a little bit more aggressive with those deep shots coming out of lateral space. Well, we are hoping this one goes for the full stretch. Games to 15 here at the World Ultimate Club Championship, so 29 points would be a thriller. And I'm just so excited to see these two teams play. I haven't actually gotten to call Fury at a World Championship level before ever, so looking forward to seeing what they can do, but Revolution, it's going to be all about riding the waves of energy. Fury are, as you say, a bit more of a, a season program, whereas the middle east side coming up, sort of bursting out onto the world scene, and of course being in the silver medal position back four years ago when we were indoors against Seattle Riot. So the sun is beating down on the fields here, local time just shy of 3 p.m., and it is going to be sweltering on that turf. So I think a couple of things that we can expect from Fury is we're going to see a lot of depth. And because they have such depth in their roster, they're going to be able to execute flawlessly with their tactical adjustments. Matty Sang's been in this position many times before. He knows what to expect with Revo, even though they've never faced off. Also looking again for that full team effort and the depth of their, their stars. Um, I believe the, the big comment we've heard over and over again, it's a wealth of riches and Fury's at, at no loss of that. Revo, if they can convert on some clean early holds and really enjoy being in this moment, they could bring that fire that disrupts Fury's tactical uh, game plan. Absolutely, and although these two teams have not met before, there's plenty of national representation on both sides. Nancy Sun for Fury, the head women's coach for the under-24 program back in Heidelberg and previous to that, will of course remember some of these players on the Revolution side coming up through the junior program. And of course, as we've said, it's going to be a battle of coaching outfits. At the moment, you know, Mauricio Moore is winning the style battle with the iconic hat, but you know, we'll have to see who is going to win the game of the clipboard. And I think that's probably the more important one. I think 
Looking back at the week uh, to get here, you see Fury coming in with a plus 75 goal differential, just massively winning their games. They did have a tight uh, couple of matchups in their power pools against Mud and Traffic. Uh, that did prepare them to, to tighten up a little bit and focus on, on sharpening that tool into the semifinal game against Phoenix. And Revo, their point differential not as large, uh, only at 57 goals, but I know that one of the focuses for them was to build the depth of their program. They brought some newer folks into their club and allowed them the opportunity to get those reps with their star players and, and get those reps at that, that high level that they don't necessarily see in, the, in their own national competition stage in Colombia. Absolutely, and of course, some of those superstar yeah, units yeah, have yeah, been yeah, playing yeah, with Revo while in the semi-professional PUL League, but also at the Pan American Ultimate Championships. But it's Fury to get us going in this women's gold medal match. Now you see the horizontal stack downfield, nice, easy fun, but snaffled by Cardenas. And Revo potentially with the early break here, Volchak and Manuela. Cardenas, they're one of the, of course, twin sisters that we are so familiar with at this elite women's level. But good shutdown defense from Fury, not managing to make much movement in a small area. Oh, and a tip disc. Well reeled in by Cardenas. Getting to see some of that dribbling, that, that give and go, really small passes and small spaces that, that Revolution is known for offensively. Oh, Kayla Helton trying to come through. There isn't any defensive errors, though, and going up into the air, Lorraine Guerin with the block. Yeah, Lorraine Guerin got that one back. It seemed like she stopped accelerating on that in-cut, allowing Hardiness to get that block. But uh, as someone who's played with and against and coached low, I know that she is ready to, to jump into the air to get those blocks when the, the moment arises. So Helton there with the expansive shot across the field, the flick for the player who, of course, this is going to be an emotional time for her, whether or not it's a gold or single hanging around her neck. Her last season with Fury. Oh, big reaching around to the deep pocket of the space. Who on earth lost the connection there on defense and an easy hold for Fury after the early turn. One thing Fury's really known for is holding their stack discipline. You saw Lorraine Guerin staying wide on that far sideline. Well, Manu Cardenas kind of poached into the lane looking to get an opportunistic poach block, something that she's very well known for. Garen just holds her position wide on the sideline. You can see as soon as Finney got the disc right back into the middle, she's scanning the field. Garen is wide open, and for someone with that kind of a flick, she can hit it anywhere. So you got you to gotta be ready. So we see that the early error, a moment of opportunity squandered by Revolution, because that would have been a statement as they tried to hit Akina Young in the end zone. You know, finishing plus one on a very active point for Lorraine Guerin, who's making her Fury debut this season. Uh, she came from Wisconsin, from Madison, Wisconsin. I got to coach her at the University of Wisconsin, and she was a star who led our team all the way to the national championships. Um, and really focused on building the depth of her teammates to see her have this opportunity to compete with Fury is, is actually really exciting for, honestly, the Wisconsin Ultimate community. Well, yes, being a rookie on either of these two programs, it might be a rookie and a newbie to the world stage in terms of this outfit, but of course, very experienced players. So the other Cardenas sister, Valeria, recovering from that ACL injury back in the hand of set. Nice dish to Cartagena. And again, this is much slower offense than we're used to seeing from Revolution. Fury's doing a great job downfield orbiting on the hips of the defenders to take away whatever the, the closest passing lane is to the disc as their players are cutting into space, as the spaces are adapting when the passes are going off, they're constantly orbiting to find the most dangerous pass at that, at that moment. Chastain dishes to Cartagena on the near side was absent for the first few games for this revolution side, but here for the meaningful side of the bracket. Cardenas shoots, and it's going to be for Volchak. Can she reel it in with the speed? The bid is there, but with the taped up shoulder, not quite the explosion from Volchak we're used to seeing. Yeah, I think she wanted to put up that left, that left arm to try to catch the disc into her hand the way that the, that forehand disc was spinning. It would have been an easier catch with the left hand, but she kind of had to go up tenderly 
Uh, hopefully that injury wasn't aggravated and she's able to, to play at full force the rest of the game. Well, Volchuk was a very useful target in the semi-final where Revolution advanced over Ellipsis. Of course, we had that North American showdown between Raleigh's Phoenix and Fury on the other side. So a sky ball going up underneath it, the pack. Who will be the victor? Sneaking through behind Ajari with the recovery. Oh, and twisting and turning, she calls it good. Claire Desmond with the goal, and that's the second point for Fury. If you're Fury, you have to feel really good about getting the disc in Anna Thompson's hand in the middle of the field with power position. Uh, we do have a little bit of a wind. You can kind of see how once the disc elevated higher up into the, the bleachers a little bit, getting more of that crosswind that's coming in. And Lisa Cooper was able to get position, pull both of those revolution defenders out of the way for her teammate to hop in and, and properly read the disc. I honestly, just getting another look at this this uh, wall check layout, you can see she started to go up, realized she's a little bit too far away, probably not worth uh, a, a potential injury to her shoulder. And then we get another look of uh, Lisa Cooper trying to pull those Revolution defenders out of the play. Her teammate getting a really good read. And uh, you can always count on Claire Desmond to follow the play to, to get that stat. She's, she's a very, very experienced player, knows that her teammates are going to come down with the disc and she's ready to, to make that score. Well, there are so many icons across the field, of course. This is what we expected in the championship game for the gold medal, the one and two seed coming into this women's division. They had a tough fight though to get here against the likes of Ellipsis and Raleigh Phoenix who did play out that 3-4 earlier here at the fields. We couldn't unfortunately bring you that stream, but of course the delight of this diamond match in front of us as Fury lead the two breaks. Cardenas hopping through. A high release to Volchak. And again, this is much slower than we normally see from Revolution's athletes. Ferrero. High dishes, the name of this point at the moment is Fury squeeze up the space. Nice around fan now. Fury's being so stingy downfield, not giving an inch to the Revolution cutters downfield, forcing them to have to reset over and over and over again. And under the hot burning Ohio sun, that's gonna wear down the O-line of Revolution quite quickly. They played pretty tight lines in their semi-final against Ellipsis. They must be feeling perhaps a tad sore today. Chastain with the reaching backhand round. They can move towards the sideline, but it's Cardenas to Ferrero. This is good spacing. Nice moves now from Cardenas. Clustered all around the disc and it makes the window opportunity. Kayla helps him with the run through block. You see Finney pointing deep, telling her teammate Kayla Helton to go, I'm ready to hit you. Well, this shot was available, but well snaffled up by the defense. Volchak hanging out in the deep space, loving that matchup against Helton. Oh, it's a high dish. Can it be reeled in bounds? No, it cannot. After making the block, a little bit of an errant on that pass, trying to hit Kelly's Cardenas. Chastain now, the Colorado-based handler, coming in to join this Colombian outfit. Torres pops into the space. Uribe, oh, again, another error from Revolution. And a short field opportunity for Fury to see themselves ascending three to nothing. And this isn't the game we expected. No, and I think the Fury defensive pressure is really causing a lot of changes to the that quick give and go movement. I think Revolution's used to getting a really good aggressive deep cut after some give go handler movement and, and Fury's doing a great job of positioning themselves behind their offensive assignments to, to push them under. And some communication about where the disc should be coming in. everyone settling their nerves I'm sure the revolution defenders are currently feeling the heat on the emotion out here on the field as Fury lead the charge 
Helton now. Pops back to Finney. Nobody wanting to mark Carolyn Finney in the backspace. Dangerous idea, if you ask me. But trying to prevent the goal. Just inches away now. Oh, and there we go. There seems to be some sort of chatter on the field, perhaps an earlier pit call. But the, uh, the lack of mark on Carolyn Finney is a rogue choice because she just sneaks into that far corner. You know, some teams can prefer to focus on taking away those passing lanes. And if they're out of position, focusing on, again, getting in there to try to disrupt an easy pass that Finney has, forcing her to maybe make a mistake or a more difficult throw until someone is able to close in on her. Oh, and it's a going over the top into the hands of the Fury player. I think that looks like Opie. I think that was uh, Michelle McGee, uh, known by some as Hydra. Uh, she actually just moved back to the Bay Area. She competed last year in the mixed division uh, with Dragon Thrust in Minneapolis, was uh, a huge contributor to their offensive unit as a handler. Again, I, it's really fun for me to see someone who's excelled in the mixed division really bringing her talents to Fury. And again, it's a talent, it's another talent to add to the roster. Well, my absolute bad there. Tried, we try not to make the errors here. We are quite far away on the, uh, the commentary box, above the stands, high up in, with the clouds almost. But a lovely dish over the top. And an easy goal and the third straight point for Fury. We talked about how Revolution could ride the waves out here, but at the moment, it seems like a tsunami heading in the direction of Columbia's hopes at a medal. Fury's really going to be able to continue to apply that defensive pressure because of the depth of defensive prowess that they have. I would imagine that the that that timeout, just talking about really solidifying that that tight defensive positioning game using their bodies on the Fury defensive side to push their offensive assignments under. You know, in a game of odds here, you know, every pass does have a completion, you know, margin of error and the more points or more passes that the Revolution handlers have to make, the more likely it is that we're going to see a turnover. That is kind of one of the dangers of such a small ball, you know, fast paced, give and go, you know, style of offense. Uh, you could see how flustered uh, Valeria Cardenas was in the end zone and, you know, that stall count rising. Honestly, I, I would probably pick to give it to Lev Kowalczyk, you know, nine out of ten times because I trust her to do anything possible to secure the disc. But Kayla Helton, talk about someone who gets better the longer she plays. I'm so inspired by her training regimen, the way she's able to coach and really build a lot of players around the world. So thankful that we get to see her on the other side showcasing her own skills. Indeed, and that is her profession as the Game Point Performance Coach and the owning COO of the Cup Camp. And training and coaching is so important, especially in the women's division. So wonderful to see these programs able to rise to these stages. Ferrero trying to find some space over the zone. A nice high snag from Yina Cartagena. Oh, and it's all just going over the top now. Not much in the way of breeze for these elite throwers to be succumbed by. Cardenas with the icy fakes, finds her sister behind. Cartagena now, absolute Manu. Chastain crashing in, trying to create the window. It does. The two Cardenas sisters going to work and a Chastain connection to finish it off and finally Revolution put their first point on the board. I smile, I'm smiling up here in the commentary booth thinking how many times do the Cardenas sisters practice that exact skill? It makes me really excited to think about um, how many times they're just running around, full up sprinting, just with those small give and goes. Uh, you know, I, I thought it was an interesting move to uh, run a trap zone uh, against Revolution. I can't think of any thrower that I would 
not want to give that option to the Valeria Cardenas. When the stall count was rising, you could see her scanning. She had a multitude of options, and with every throw in her pocket, you never know where she's going to go. I was so surprised that she actually hit the dump, but it did create some really good momentum for her sister to just, again, build that give-go right through that, that trap zone that Brie was setting. And momentum is exactly what Revolution now needs to build as they sit those two points back from Fury, leading the charge in this women's gold medal match. And another star coming back from an ACL tear with the disc right now, one of the best pullers in the world, Elizabeth Mascara. If I was drafting a team and I was going to pick a puller across any division in any country, she would be my number one pick for a pull. Chatting with Justin Ford about the uh, gender pulling rules that we saw at World Games. And uh, Mascara's name, of course, inevitably came up. He called her the best thrower in the world at the moment. So Ella Melek on the far side. Nice movement around. Payne. Dishing across. Very happy to take just these underpasses. But Revolution now starting to turn the screws and they get the turnover. Hot pressure in the dump space. A dish over the top to Volchak. Montagna. Across to Young, she's going to have to try and bid it. And a nice bit of positioning. OP Payne slams the door shut. I love the defensive assignment of putting Mish Phillips on Anna Thompson. Or sorry, that was Jesse O'Connor in the backfield, trying to disrupt one of the most consistent um, offensive handlers in the game. Jesse O'Connor, known for many years playing with DC Scandal, bringing her talents to the other coast, playing with Fury now. A big ball towards the end zone for Fury. Ella Melek in the isolation. Oh, and a nice little recovery there. Maggie Rudin collects the goal. Nearly was a turnover, but great focus and poise. Part of Fury's systematic horizontal stack is that every time the disc swings, the cutter that's on that, that sideline rail drops back into the handler position. And that's when you get to see opportunities for players like Jesse O'Connor and Nancy Sunda streak upfield. So you got to see both of them showing off their speed uh, and, and finding a way to kind of get that fast break momentum going. Even though we saw a little bit of reset miscommunication, I think it's very difficult to try to throw around the mark of Mish Phillips, uh, forcing Jesse O'Connor to have to really commit to that reset, even though it was well defended. Opie Payne making that nice, easy backhand. You could see that she calibrated, saw how fast and how far Nancy's son was going to be. Maggie Rudin trusting that her teammates are going to score that, or to, going to come down with that goal so that she can follow the play and, and get the score. Well, the team that have been utilizing their rookies and bringing them into the fold so well, you cannot kind of overcome some of just the experience and knowledge of players who just get a lot of reps together. Yeah, and honestly, Nancy Sun and Maggie Rudin, that's a classic Fury score right there. So at the moment, Revolution fighting to keep their necks above water. At the moment, the rising tide of fury and this smother cover defense. Lovka Volchak winds up the arm. Cartagena now on the far side. Nice dish in front of Volchak. Torres. The high one to Ferrero. This is good swinging. Lots of spacing between the Revolution players. Volchuk making move towards the end zone. Switch down, Field's going to cover it though. Ferrero far side. Nice low backhand from Cartagena to find Chastain. All the movement just slow, grind up the field right now. Oh, Torres nearly with the miscue, but well came tamed. Angel back to Torres. Volchuk going to work in front of the disc. 
Good switching off from Fury, nearly gets the foot block from Helton, but it's Chastain with the goal. I think this is a really good contrast of offensive style that we've seen, you know, Revolution struggling the first few offensive possessions. It seemed as though the Revolution offense found their timing and spacing downfield much more effectively. You can see that when a handler had the disc, there was a lot more space for them to throw to, making those smaller resets and those give-goes a lot easier to hit, as opposed to someone who's only inches away from you. Yeah, I loved, honestly, every time Gina Cartagena's got the disc, her fakes are so powerful, they're so realistic. Uh, I, players often ask, Robin, how can I get better at faking? I've told many of my players that I coach to look at Cartagena's fakes. You can clearly tell that she's very intentional about how she moves her mark, and every single fake could be a throw. It's, it's really incredible. Well, we are being treated to the creme de la creme of elite women's division play out here on the fields in Ohio. But at the moment, the proud USA team have got a lot to be grateful for. Those three points unanswered to open up this championship match as they look to do a second world title after 10 years since their, or 12 years, sorry, since their first in Prague in 2010. The pull, lofting, and hanging. Defense on the attack. But knives moves around from Fury. Oh, it's a high release into Ella Melek. Of course, famous for her mermaid catch, college nationals level. Desmond looking for the reset. Coming back is Thompson. This is nice, easy stuff. Rudin now with a lot of room. Matched up by Carolina Angel. Maggie Rudin is known for just impeccable timing, impeccable spacing as a cutter. Every time that the disc is swinging, it seems like she set up her cut two or three passes ago for where she needs to be two or three throws later. And I think that was a really good example when we see Thompson get that reset. Rudin is slashing across the field into the middle, trying to change the angle of attack, trying to set up her teammates downfield for a really good and effective angle to take advantage of their matchup no matter where. We can consider it offsetting if you both think that there was contact from moving into no, the space. I, didn't call a foul. I called a foul. Yep. Um, do you think I initiated the contact? I think we were both fighting for the same space. And in that moment, we made contact with each other, and that's just what happens. Do you think we're going to come to an agreement? I think I want to So that will come back on the contested offensive foul. Revolution trying to interrupt the rhythm of Maggie Rudin's dynamic cuts and timing. It's a lefty dish across the top. Very nice stuff to O'Connor. Oh, and it's a low one, well rescued and kept alive by Anna Thompson. Corners being made on the field, whether or not that's to uh, check the shape of the disc or to call it down. We had another pass, uh, I would say similar, early in the Open Division final, where if that throw had been on the standard grass pitches that we had been playing on all week at this tournament that may have been down just because of how high, highly lofted the grass was, but because we're on turf, that was, I think, a clear up call. Yeah, the velveteen conditions on the field site at the Lebanon Sports Complex. Perfect for bids in the early stages, but did become slippery when it got wet. Oh my goodness, that is a huge play. Mosquera with the layout, preventing the score. And you don't see her leave her feet that way very often because Mosquera is an expert at beating her, her offensive assignment to any space. Well, now this for the first break back for the campaign to climb up the hill that Fury has made the big fake from Cardenas finds her sister up line give and go between the two twins has had contrasting yet similar careers my dishes 
Still grinding up that far sideline. Montana dishing back. Cardinus collections. Mish the snail. As she's known in her home nation of Australia going to work. But again, it's all about high number of passes, just slowly nibbling away at the distance between them and the goal line. Manuela Cardenas falling for a space against the mark of Ella Melik. Perhaps some fatigue from the deep space. Not really much happening, just all the action around the disc. Containment here is just insane. Oh, and there goes the expansive shot to the end zone. A big clatter. That looks to be Valeria Cardenas getting sandwiched. It was definitely a, a contested throw. Um, as you were mentioning, that there wasn't a whole lot of uh, continuations from the cutters downfield. It really seemed like the Revolution offense was focusing in on just waiting for a strike cut towards the front of the end zone that they preferred. Let's take another look at that. Nope. Looks like it was an uncontested foul call and Valeria Cardenas will take the disc at the front cone. Perhaps no other thrower in the world that you would want least if you're Fury to have the disc in this position. Well, she pops back to her sister. The world famous twins. Oh, and that's a lovely shot into the space, sneaking behind all of the Fury defenders. And that is the break for Columbia. Ish Phillips kind of ran a, a fake cut there to pull two of the Fury defenders out. You know, that wasn't an easy throw and an easy catch by any means, but, you know, there's so much trust in this Colombian style of ultimate. You know, many of these Revolution players coming from their national team program where the motto really is built on trust. And you don't get much more of a trust throw than that one. We get another look at that Thompson layout snag. I thought that was a, I thought that one was up. I think she got it. But it's Mosquera going to work with the hero save to keep Revolution's hopes alive of taking the gold medal. You can see throwing over the top of the laying defenders. Montagna reading that one in, and that was a must-get block. You know, for being so far away from the pitch right now, I felt like we actually had a really good line to see that layup block develop. You could see that, you know, Mascara was forcing her forcing her offensive player towards the sideline, took that one big explosive plant step on the inside, you know, hip of her uh, of Dina Elmelik, and honestly, I, I can't I can't think of a maybe better layup block that I've seen from Mascara over the years because. Normally, she just runs and beats her person into the space. Normally, she doesn't have to extend herself because she is such an athlete. Well, this isn't just any normal game, Robin. This is the World Championship Finals. And of course, Revolution looking to do one better than 2018 when they came home, the bridesmaids, to Seattle's riot. But it's a low error, and is this the gift that Revolution needs? They're certainly going to try and unwrap the ribbon on the top of it. Options flurrying under Volchuk to Ferrero. Giving and going. Chastain now going to have to make a huge play. She has a little look at it, but decides better of the bid. The redemption for Fury as they played some excellent red zone defense there. The shot's going to be a bit too loose, though. Shayla Harris trying to connect downfield to Bethany Kayla. These flicks, I think, are going to get increasingly difficult as the game goes on. As somebody who has very sweaty hands, I like to think of myself a pretty good thrower. But when it gets hot, those flicks are really hard to get a good grip on, especially those short and easy flicks to space. Oh, it's going to be Desmond trying to shoot for Mish Phillips, but that's far too far out. 
I almost would have liked to see Claire Chastain put that inside edge hitting Mish Phillips on that other side of the field. It felt like the space was maybe closing in. Chastain has immense you know, precision with her throws, especially her backhand hook, both precision and power. You know, it might be coming back because the disc never really quite came in. If she would have maybe put that inside edge aimed for that opposite cone, I think we would be uh, all tied up. Felt like a bit of a shortcut, which is sometimes what you can do on D. You're allowed, you know, you've got to get the block and then do something. Sometimes fast moves can be good. Nice over the top there, the swiping arm of Chastain trying to get it back, and that's a laser on a knee catch. It's going to be cool, good by some players. A little chat before. I mean, they do have the Jumbotrons available to review the footage. Let's get another look at that. Part of me wonders, did uh, Dina Elimelech uh, bring the mermaid catch practice to her team? Because, uh, you know, as the closest person there, it... Uh, it was a very, uh, very Dina-esque uh, mermaid catch there for uh, Cardenas. Well, we talked about it, that college championship moment. I mean, it's hard. It's hard not to 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 mention that when any time that Dina's on the field, because that was one of the most bananas catches I've ever seen in such a huge moment, nonetheless. I mean, I, I think I think you should uh, recreate it in our booth for, for the non-viewing public. I can provide public. a perspective if you like. From my perspective, she held it between her knees, and then when she came down, it was firmly secured between her knees. So, of course, the rule on a valid catch is that the disc has to have stopped rotation between two body parts. It doesn't have to be hands. It can be, you know, one hand, one side of the head. And that is called a valid golf of fury. They hold on to it by the skin of their kneecaps. Is it still good? The smallest of margins in the biggest of stages. And uh, any other way that uh, any other way that that would not have been a goal. When I saw Shayla Harris wind up for that that throw, I was I thought you know that window wasn't very open. Uh, but again, Fury, just like Revolution, they have that trust in their teammates, and I think that's why we're seeing so many different players getting involved in the offensive possession. So playing a little bit of pinball, and you can see the hand immediately going to the head in dismay But Camila Botero. She gets the block, but just pings it straight into the lap. In a game like this, Catching your blocks is so, so important because you do not want to give your opponent an opportunity to make a play. With the athletes on both sides of the disc, you need to be sure and you need to make sure that you're capturing the disc to give your team the best chance you can to take advantage of every opportunity. So Revolution's O-line back out on these hot turf fields. The sun took a brief pause behind the cloud, but it's now back in full force, of course, though. And they're inside, used to playing under hot conditions, as are the San Francisco natives. Of course, California, no free sunshine. Got to go to TEP this spring, and uh, in Madison, Wisconsin, when it was still snowing, it was hot and sticky in the city of Eternal Spring. Well, it's definitely sticky up here in our booth in Ohio. The humidity index rose to 96 earlier in the week. Such changeable conditions here on the fields. So in this Mason Stadium. Manuela Cardenas looking for options. It's a flick on the inside to Cartagena. Cartagena with the inside shot to Manuela. Torres. The mark not moved by that fake. Ferreria around to Cartagena. Oh, and it's a nice run through for the goal. Alejandra Torres. That's a much needed hold. Still behind the one break. But this is a match that Revolution could well snatch. The Revolution end zone set, it feels like it's death by a thousand cuts. You're seeing lots of little give-go passes just waiting for that opportunity. 
You know, when the throwers, the, the, those key throwers on Revolution get the disc, they maybe get a little bit more latitude to be uh, creative. Uh, that, that nice around flick break opened up that nice continuation opportunity for Torres. Revolution historically has been really known for hitting those inside striking up field um, cuts, and that's what we just saw off the score. Well, a timeout here under the hot beating sun in Ohio on the world championship title on the line. We've got some uh, sideline action for you, Tyler Byram with the inside track on Kayla Helton, of course, this last appearance with Fury. Well, Hannah, as you said, this is the last time that the great Kayla Helton will don a San Francisco Fury jersey. This year, the six-time U.S. national champion takes her talents to America's finest city as she is helping organize a new club team, San Diego Flipside. Now, she actually hasn't lived in the Bay Area over the past several years, living in San Diego and even North Carolina for a time. But she's traveled across the country playing for Fury, sometimes making practices, as now she brings on a new endeavor with her and Dina Elimelech, the UC San Diego graduate, going on to make that team along with fellow former members of the Dragon Coalition. It's no swan song for Helton, but she told me pregame that she's trying not to let the emotions take over in her final game for Fury and just live life in the moment. Back to you, Hannah. Well, of course, this time four years ago, it was all the chat about Sarah Serge Griffith and that pull, although the crowd is not so happy about that one being brought to the front of the end zone, but what a mighty fine effort that was. Nearly the full stretch of the field violation going to be called, though. Bring us brief pause. But yeah, this time four years ago, Robin, it was all about Sarah Serge Griffith playing her last chance with Riot before, of course, coming across to this Fury side. And uh, she's she's done a lot, I think, emotionally. She's uh, she's not currently on the field for Fury, but still a, a very huge part as an emotional leader. We're gonna have some conversation about that, uh, about how Kirsten Johnson. Uh, tapped the disc and maybe it, with that, that fake it looked as though she had uh, set her pivot foot at that back home. Well, she marks and just, just sends the defense away saying you weren't quite that close to me when I picked the disc up but the crowd very pleased with that one. The full credit being given to the huge revolution pull. That's absolute spirit of, spirit of the game. A, a great demonstration of self-officiation, fair-mindedness of Johnson to be able to say, you know what, even in the biggest of moments, this is what I did and I'm responsible and held herself accountable for that. Well, a big moment and a big throw from Johnson's going to be picked out of the sky by Elizabeth Mosquera. Montagna to Gardenas. Going around, nice quick movement. This is more like the pace of revolution. They're starting to feel themselves in this women's final. Gardner shoots. There is separation for Volchak, and you just see Finney pulling up in dismay. Volchak with the goal, and that's the break. We are on serve once more. I'm really, really hoping that Elizabeth Mascara has herself a game on defense. She has got that. She's got two blocks already in crucial moments to really change the tide of the game. And honestly, seeing Levka Volchek be able to connect in the exact same space in the end zone that, you know, she, she didn't quite connect with uh, the other Cardinal sister early on in the game. But Revolution able to turn that block into momentum, find some separation into the deep space for a nice, easy looking breakthrough. And the stumble there at the end, but the closing speed of Lufka Volchak, the World Games athlete, of course, being so dynamic for that team. Germany side a couple of weeks ago in Alabama will also be playing at the World Spikeball Championships in Belgium in September. Along her partner, Laura Kunzelman, who is also here at this World Championships, playing for Seagulls. Is there nothing that Volchak can do? I think she could pick up some other random sport that has nothing to do with flying in the air to, to make incredible plays and would probably still excel. 
Well, one of the things she has done, which I have to credit, is she started doing more juggling type activities to actually improve. So obviously that improves the spike ball reaction times, but also, you know, we've seen some bubble discs already at the beginning of this game and keeping that focus, playing perhaps a game of flubber guts or so, will uh, help you in these crucial moments where you're under hot pressure from the sun and the defense. So Fury now trying to hold on to their lead in this game. Started on offense, of course, having won the toss, but will that be enough? as we trade out here. Desmond finds Thompson, and that's a lovely release, but it's going to be snaffled up by Mish Phillips. Mish Phillips keeping her head on a swivel. As soon as that disc uh, went up in the air, it didn't seem like it was exactly where the thrower was intending it to go, but Mish just being aware of where the disc was was in really good position to make that throw very challenging. In order to hit the receiver, they would have had to go over Mish Phillips and with the, the tall stature and just incredible athleticism, it's going to be a very hard ask for any thrower, no matter how good you are. Yeah, Mish Phillips, of course, another of the World Games athletes playing against Lefka Volchak earlier on this month. It's such an icon. You can see Elamelek having a little look at that, ready to make the backup play, but Repositioning from Phillips. Yeah, from the from the booth, it was unclear who the intended receiver was, whether it was uh, Ella Melik or Garen. But seeing that that replay where that we get to see behind the thrower, that is my favorite way to watch Ultimate. So I can see how the spaces develop. I'm so excited to see how these really creative and dynamic throwers attack the space. I think that was intended for Ella Melik and. Uh, and you know, the fact that Mish Phillips and Lorraine Guerin kind of got pulled into that space, you know, there needs to perhaps be a bit more communication between Guerin and Ella Melik as they're attacking that, that same space in the end zone. Well, Ella Melik, one of the newer players coming through this Fury side. No means a rookie, definitely not a rookie on this squad, but perhaps one of the, the less well-polished connections to this Fury side, but a dynamic athlete for sure. Volchak now attacking up line on the far side. As if we didn't get enough of that Volchak OB Payne matchup in the World Games, we're treated to it again. Absolutely, Mosquera gets big on Elimelech. That's a dynamic matchup also. And the two Cardinal sisters now giving and going up the far sideline. I think there's going to be a travel call. It's really hard to point out any one matchup I'm the most excited to watch because. I see one, I'm like, oh, I love that. I love this uh, Ellen Melick mascara matchup. And then I see Mish Phillips and Lorraine Guerin. And then I see Opie Payne and, and, and Valeria Cardenas. It's, it's just, it's wild to see how many different matchups of just world-class athleticism that we are treated to every single point that's played. I think we can just summarize it. We're, with, with, we're excited for this game. We're excited for these young athletes out here on the fields in front of us. Ferrero up to Cardenas. Again, the two twins connecting on the far side, not making as many yards as the one that got called back, but another pick call. That is one of the maybe unintended consequences of this fast, small style of offense is that if you're not absolutely on the same page, you could cause some picks. Phillips. They're sitting and waiting for the options to develop. Oh, it's going to be a risky shot through, but firing underneath from the back of the end zone. The goal and the break for the revolution. That's three in a bounce. I mean, we got to see three right away from Fury to start off. I, I, it just it feels like this is just a trading of, of blows to each other. Um, you see one tactical adjustment, the other a team gets to adjust just a bit. And uh, we're seeing that go back and forth and back and forth. Elizabeth Mascara doing what she does best, and I think that's elevate over any receiver. It's rare that you see Dana Alamelek get roofed. If it's going to happen, I honestly, if I was, if someone said, I, I just saw Dina Alamelek get skied, I probably would have asked, was it Elizabeth Mascara? Was it in a Revolution matchup? And I, I think I'd be pretty, you know, it, it's a pretty 50-50 toss-up, I feel. 
so it is hot 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 at the top after some fairly close semi-finals of course revolution besting ellipsis of australia who finished fourth in the swimmers division whereas fury had that showdown against riley phoenix who snagged themselves the bronze here I really, really, really wish that I could have been able to see the full semi-final of Revolution versus Ellipsis. Uh, my team was playing and warming up for another game, so I didn't get to watch the whole thing. Of course, and we see a huge pull once again. I can congratulate you briefly, Robin, on your fifth place in the world, of course. Sixth place. We did lose in the fifth place match, but we are pretty pleased with ourselves to be the second best mixed club team at this tournament from the United States. It was close, though. Close run thing. You know, we had a, a few universe point losses to some really good teams, and we feel really good about the momentum our team was able to build, which is something that Fury is looking to do here as well, to finish strong into the US uh, club season. So Lou, with the pass into the center, nearly taken away by the poach block. Lufka Volchak puts on heavy pressure, but cannot deny the Fury goal. Anna Nazarov, Kind of a, a heat check throw, I feel like. You know, she's got so many throws. And when you see Marika Austin streaking deep into the end zone with steps on her defender, you got to reward her. Uh, Marika Austin has, has always been known as someone who hustles until the point is done. Uh, uh, in the uh, 2017 uh, cycle for the World Games tryouts uh, for Team USA, I got to watch Marika just destroy people when they were tired. It seems like the longer the point goes, or the longer the cut, or the more the mo like the more grit that she has to dig, she just excels. She just rises to the top, and I think that's one of the things that I really enjoy about her play. Well, actually, the athlete who ended up replacing your good self after your knee injury back in 2016, Robin winning herself the first runner-up to the Defensive Player of the Year back in 2021. And she really is a defender's defender. And she is a delightful teammate. Um, I felt so much support from her um, going through a pretty tough time myself when I, when I did, you know, lose the opportunity to play with Team USA, but I can't think of a better person to have replaced me uh, than her. Honestly, her heart and her fire and her just hustle. What a great teammate. Well, after the three unanswered points for Revolution, they now lead the one break over Fury. But the hold here would see them put themselves on top in this first half. Angel puts back to Cartagena. There's much more space in the near side for the field. Oh, and there's got to be some broken defense downfield and taken advantage of very well by Colombia. Catalina Angel with the score. You can see Claire Desmond as soon as that throw went up, she pointed to herself and she knew that she kind of messed up the defensive coverage. That whole point, you can tell that Fury was coming down with a nice flat mark, being very responsive to disrupt the thrower's options. The goal, I think, of that whole defensive set was just to get those pivots uh, to try to, to alter and make the, uh, the revolution thrower go to the secondary option, but you can see Claire Desmond was a bit too far off and maybe a bit too angled. So giving uh, Torres that option to kind of go through that space between her arm and her leg and hit a really nice unoccupied throwing lane there. So Revolution currently out in front after going three down to Fury. They've ground this one back out. And Mosqueda there readying for the pull. They can sink this one in. We'll be going into half with a two-point lead. Mauricio Moore making sure that every defensive matchup is exactly the right one. So how far is this one going to go? Very far indeed. That is a huge pull once again. And it's a dropped one. You can see the hands of Carolyn Finney going up to her face immediately. And this is absolute scenes, Robin. It's happened to a lot of folks fielding pulls, but uh, it's tough that this is the moment that it happened to Carolyn Finney. 
Well, an elite handler comes a little bit unstuck here on the hot turf in Ohio. And it's going to be Cardenas to Mosquera for the connection and half. 8-6, revolution over Fury. And we talked about riding the waves, Robin. This is currently on a high for the athletes in pink. I think Mascara gets credited with the bookends there, right? An excellent pull, difficult to field. You can kind of see the flags in the background. We're getting a little bit more of a, a wind, but it's not very consistent, making it very difficult to field the pull. And uh, so challenging uh, the Fury offense immediately with that difficult pull and get rewarded with the score. Well, we saw Carolyn Finney at the World Games having not quite the execution she wanted in the early stages of the tournament for Team USA, but really coming through strong in their final against Australia to snag that gold medal. I'm sure she's more than capable of making the recovery, but at the moment, Revolution have fired up the energy on defense and leading this charge eight to six. We'll be back with the second half after this. place where everyone is welcome regardless of age shape skin color or anything else that tries to box people in a place where we defy the odds defy the naysayers and even defy gravity a place where it's accepted that success doesn't belong to the faint-hearted it belongs to the brave to the determined a place that knows grit knows grace, knows bright lights, and knows empty bleachers. A place where we remember to laugh. Where we learn to trust, learn to high-five strangers, and eventually even learn to fly. A place where character, community, and competition are all as balanced as a disc in flight. That place isn't in a stadium or on a field. That place is in the spirit of our players. Because we don't just play ultimate, we live ultimate. Halftime here in the women's final match, the gold medal at stake. Revolution leading uh, Fury, even. And we've got a sideline interview with Tyler Byram and Nancy Sun. Thanks, Anna. Nancy, this first half was electric. It was a great half of ultimate, but Revolution was able to go on a big run after you guys went up a handful of breaks. What did you see happen in that first half from your perspective? I mean, I think it's the first half of runs, uh, like you just said, and I think we're out here ready to battle. Uh, we've done a lot of scouting of this team. They've done a lot of scouting on us, and I would expect it to be going back and forth. Now, what do you anticipate will be the adjustments you guys make at halftime? Some of it was simple execution errors, but they're also making plays on the other side. What do you think coach will be able to tell you guys? Yeah, I mean, I think on defense, like, we love the pressure that we're putting on, uh, and that pressure's going to continue to build throughout the course of the game, and it's going to pay off in the second half for us. Uh, and then on offense, I think for us, it's just about being decisive with our cuts. Now, Fury is no stranger to be in high-pressure situations. You've been here before. Gold medal match. Is this team capable of making this comeback? I have so much confidence in this group that we have right now. We love the battle. We're going to come out and give a show in the second half. Awesome. Sounds great, Nancy. Evan, Katie, over to you. Tyler, thank you. What a half of ultimate. Here with Katie Killebrew at our game day set. As you can see, I've classed things up a little bit to match. Yes, absolutely. What, what a half. Absolutely. We went down to be right there in front of the action, and I think Fury went out and Revel absolutely revving up to come back in that second half, or that first half. I can't wait to see the second half. The second half should be riveting. Can Fury get back in it? They jumped in front four to one. They led three nothing. Revo had four red zone turnovers early in the game. They just couldn't find that finishing connecting pass. And then in a blink of an eye, the game completely swung. Fury started taking some riskier shots. Revo's defense got in gear, started converting. And it's a seven 
to two run for the Colombians to take half in just an incredible changing of the tides, Katie. Well, we wanted something exceptional and that's what we're seeing. Momentum shifts really showing what can happen when a side gets really emotional. The crowd is behind Revolution. They I still don't think that's everything. a goal. Excuse me. I don't think that should have been a goal. Do you disagree? I would be impressed if my legs could squeeze a disc enough to uh, stop motion there. But I think that it's exciting either way. Very exciting. Very cool. I'm just not sure Revo should have given in as quickly as they did when they saw the replay. Eliza Mosquera pulled out of bounds. They got to get her to pull in bounds. She's the maybe, maybe a bigger field would suit Mosquera. Uh, let's look at the first half numbers in this topsy turvy back and forth half. Fury kind of similar to yesterday. Not converting cleanly on offense. Only one clean hold. And Revo clearly with uh, many more break chances in that first half, Katie. Yeah, both of these teams converting a lot of those break chances, but Fury has to stop giving Revolution the disc. They have to hold on to it. They can clearly throw and catch well, but if they if they don't clean it up, Revolution's I think gonna run away with this one. Well, they ran away with the first half after being behind four to one. One half of ultimate left here at the World Championships. What do you think the difference is gonna come down to? Inches. We've already seen so many discs right on the level of the turf, and I think it's going to be more plays like that that are the difference in this game. All right, the players are heading out to the lines in front of us under the sun here in Ohio. World Ultimate Club Championships final half of the tournament. Fury, Revolution, Hannah, and Robin. Enjoy it. We'll see you after the game. Well, in the moments before this second half gets underway, and it has been a game of momentum. It's all about the swings and the waves here in this Women's Championship final at the World Ultimate Club Championships 2022. The Atrium Stadium, Mason High School, as the hands of revolution go up. And you can see the smiles on their faces there, Robin. Proud of themselves being up two breaks over Fury. I, I'm really hoping and expecting to see a nice pull play out of Revolution. The last, I can't remember if it's the last offensive hold or the, the one before that, that they had a really good um, initiating set where Lev Kowalczyk was able to get a pretty big under. I, I would imagine that, that, I mean, that's what I would try to do. I'd try to call, I think she's doing a great job of eating up big yards in the middle of the, the field to get that end zone set initiated. Uh, I, I like how involved she is kind of in, in the beginning of the, the offense. And then we kind of see the, the Cardenas uh, sisters, although only one of them's out there right now, taking control and of that pace and, and the options that they're attacking in the end zone. Well, the pull from Fury going up and gonna land out of bounds on the far side of the field. Not quite over the flags. Of course, 30 nations represented here at the World Ultimate Club Championships. 48 teams in the mixed division and 40 in both the open and women's divisions. I feel like a broken record sometimes, but I think the next big thing in Ultimate strategically is the intentional out-of-bounds pulls. Uh, for a team like Revolution, that when you give them momentum, it's really hard to stop. Making them have to go from a dead disc, I, uh, I don't hate it. I don't hate it either, Robin. And certainly, Fury have done an excellent job of just slowing down Revolution. Oh, and there's a complete miscue. You can see the arms from Chastain goes out as she jogs away. Complete miscue between Chastain and Volchak. Sounds as if there was a call downfield. So we have a foul, uncontested. Do we think it affected this play? Is this the call or was it no there was no other call. Are we? Do we think it affected this play? Well, the game advisor asking the important questions there, because that was a miscue in the hander space, but the foul call upfield. And you can hear some of the discussion on the field focusing on 
the kind of the difference between the rule sets in the USA uh, Ultimate Club Division, that would be a turnover. But in WIFT, if, if the, the WFDF rule set, um, if Lev Kovalchuk heard the foul call and immediately stopped moving, that did impact her. Does play anyone pee since they were affected? Yeah, the foul, of course, the stoppage. There's but no the limit players to on the field. So even if there's something happening back there, if you guys weren't affected, it could still be a turnover. But with this throw, was it affected? So we can have a turnover. It's up to you guys if you think you guys were affected. So the disc will be over here. Well, Lev Kovalchak is a player whose focus is hard to distract. She is all business all the time out on the field and not distracted by that pit call and the turnover is indeed called and will stand. Marika Austin punching back to Nazarov. Nice find for Helton. Nice conservative play from Fury. Being given those easier rounds, Harris to Thompson. Oh, nice movement, hot pressure coming in from Valeria Cardenas. Looking at the inside, having to take the dish to Thompson. Patience continuing. Oh, nice slicey inside. Striding up the far sideline. Anna Nazarov turns. Helton now trying to get free of Volchuk. And the big pivot from Lorraine Guerin and a foul call. It's really hard as a mark uh, to, to, to avoid contact there. Okay, we have an accepted foul. This is coming back on zero. So Uribe getting a bit too much on the mark there. A high disc into the end zone. It's taken away by the Valeria Cardenas, the thief on the goal line. Torres with the pass to Chastain, now moving well across, but Chastain with another error, that's two for her in this point, gives the disc to Kayla Helton. Oh, and that's a lovely throw into the space, but a bit too much to be taken in by Anna Thompson. You could see the throwing space just looked like Anna Thompson just stopped, hesitated for just a second. I really liked the throw though. I wish that it would have worked out because I thought it was very visionary uh, to look into that space where, where the space was actually opening up. Yeah, I'm out. Awadel Karim with an excellent idea. The PhD student currently living in Oakland, but revolution now able to try and get their next point on the board. And the first in this second half. Cartagena across. Torres. Cardenas. Thompson coming in. Having been blocked by the rest of her teammates. Against this fast moving, flowing revolution. Oh. Cartagena. Has Cardenas in the near space. Gonna have to go for a bigger round, does. Torres coming under. Oh, and that's a nice release, finding a almost already sat down Livka Volta getting low for the hold for Revolution. Nine to six now, their lead with just over 36 minutes of regulation time remaining. Fury's going to, to want those possessions back. Uh, they had a few really good opportunities. Uh, and we, we got 
a very nice poach block by Valeria Cardenas where she was able to, to come in. You know, she missed the first one in the Battle of the Air with uh, Shayla Harris, but was able to come in, make that adjustment. And then just another misconnection for Fury, which, you know, later in the season, I'm expecting that Fury's going to clean that up come October when we, we will inevitably see them in a, in a, in a game of importance um, in the club championships for, for USA Ultimate. But, you know, right now it looks like Revolution's executing in the red zone at a, at a higher margin than they were when we were starting this game. Well, it's lovely to see Revolution cleaning things up, but I mean, I'm just a fan of this game to go into the full 29 points, Robin. If we can get a Fury D-line roll, that would just see us off nicely. Yeah, I'm not cheering for bad ultimate, but I would really like to be treated to a few extra points. Desmond around. Freedom. Fires it in, and it just falls out of the palms of Megan Lou. An uncharacteristic error for the Fury offense. Oh, but there's the error given right back. Mish Phillips. There's an off-disc foul. Um, Aki Young and Kirsten Johnson deciding if it impacted any play or if the disc needs to go back. Uh, it appears that it was a foul accept and it, the turnover will stand the disc in Jesse O'Connor's hands. Payne. Shoots to Desmond, now looking for options. This is great person coverage, but sneaking through and throwing what's surely going to be a goal. Oh no! Kirsten Johnson not able to close the window and take the goal for Fury. When that disc went up to Jesse O'Connor, I, I really thought that that was going to be a completion. It maybe looked like O'Connor perhaps rushed the throw just a bit, something she's definitely not known for doing. Mosquera matched up with Chen. A stoppage sees Manuela Cardenas It was just to take a breather. Look at the options around her. Mosqueda pops up to Montagna. Oh, and that's a big bomb to the end zone. Mish Phillips with the initial separation, but hot on the attack is the defense of Claire Desmond. Looks like we have a foul call. Claire Desmond coming in, reading the disc, and, and maybe giving Mish Phillips a bit of contact. They'll definitely be discussing whether or not the, the contact was incidental or a non-major contact. Yeah, the left-hand placement of Desmond there, probably to try and just see where Mish is, but perhaps a bit too much of a bump. Sounds contested? Yep. So it'll be going back to the throw. So we're going to get a rewind on that play after the chat. It was definitely a big effort from Mish Phillips to get away from Desmond in the first place, had the separation, but just the, against the wind, of course, going from right. So we've not really talked much about the wind in this game, Robin. It is definitely fluttering the flags quite heartily. It seems like the wind is becoming more of a factor as the game goes on, which is fairly typical of the uh, the Midwest in the United States. As someone who gets to play in these conditions quite often, uh, some might say it's a, a thrower's wind, and I uh, can't think of uh, fewer throwers with the disc who could maneuver and, and get a little bit of extra oomph with that wind than Manu Cardenas. So back in play, Cardenas with the mark from Payne. Mosqueda under. Oh, 
Montagna. Giving and going, but good. Smother cover up line from Rudum. And Denise Montagna. Mosquera without a mark. Or just a big poach off from Chen. Cardenas pops. Oh, and there's the error. You can see Rudin immediately going into the end zone. The longer that these points go on, the more I have to think it favors Fury. Uh, with that pod-based line system, they're able to continue to put out fresh line after fresh line after fresh line of stars. Jesse O'Connor looking a little bit lost. Is going to have to go for something creative and does to Desmond. Oh, and it's a laser. I, that was nearly another knee catch, but it's dirty and it will do for Fury. They hold on. Jessica O'Connor reeling in the score. 9-7. Jesse O'Connor is maybe one of the most underappreciated handlers in the women's club division. Um, during Scandal's you know, long run at national championships, she was the one who kept their offense moving. She was the one who made it so that they could continue to get good deep shots to their incredible receivers, Sandy Jorgensen, Obi Payne. And then to see her come to the West Coast, play with a team like Fury, that really values a very versatile handler who can not only keep the pace going, but is willing to go upfield. Every time that disc swings for Fury, you'll see that handler on the space on the side that they're swinging towards. They will abandon and they're going to go upfield, uh, looking to get additional yards with the cutters. So. Jesse O'Connor getting to shine in a very different way. So some opportunities there given to Revolution, but eventually Fury hold down two breaks coming into the second half. And of course, Fury with the advantage. They started this game on offense. So if this just ends up trading for breaks, they will see themselves with a shiny gold medal being hung around their neck after this game. So the fans in the stands with lots of umbrella game. It is beating down upon our shoulders here. Robin having made the excellent choice to be wearing shorts in the booth. You know, people often uh, comment on how how uh, my fashion choices are always on par, including my socks and Crocs, but I guess it's a, a polarizing fashion choice, perhaps. Well, I've gone for the bling with some rings, but we've got some sparkle in the Crocs section here today. But some Crocs out on the field, well, just the one in this match. Of course, Mish Phillips going to work for Revolution in the previous point, but unable to collect the goal under the hot pressure of Desmond. But right now, it's the Heat trying to fire up for this revolution offense. Cartagena pops through to Angel. A oh, nice flat one in the center of the field. Oh, and the connection there, just the little left foot stamp. There's a little discussion on the field as to if that was in bounds. Love the spirit from Opie Payne on the near side of the field, immediately signaling the goal. She's pretty certain that was good. And eventually Sun, after a little bit of discussion, agrees. That end zone possession, again, Revolution able to punch in quickly because they're able to find so much more space for their throwers. When the disc was on that close sideline, it was just two swings, and there, there wasn't a single player who cut off any of the passes. From the booth, it was really hard to tell if she was in or out. I mean, if her foot's touching any part of that line, she is not in the end zone. Well. It's not on us to call, thankfully, Robin. The interesting choice of color for the field lines out here. It is blue, very difficult to spot from up high in our cams. And honestly, with the, uh, the reflection of the sun on the turf, it makes it that much harder to see. I definitely couldn't say I had best perspective on that call. Certainly not. But of course, delighted to be in the Mason High School Atrium Stadium, Dwyer Field, rather than in an indoor 
sports complex. Of course, those with a uh, memory of four years ago will know we had a big old shake up to the final section of the tournament. Many teams having to settle for a joint first place due to the weather. And of course, the indoor soccer fields and those thrilling 20 minute semi final second halves. We saw Revolution making huge plays, advancing, but taking just the silver. We say just the silver. Second in the world, still pretty darn good. So Rudin for the underspace, popping across. Oh, that's a very big put, but look at the shape on that disc. You're singing, hanging, but Ella Malik with the huge grab over the top of the pack and sinks the goal straight away. The spike from Kirsten Johnson just to sign that one off. You know, uh, Elizabeth Mascara got the best of Dean Ellen Malik earlier, and uh, the fact that Dean Ellen Malik got to go and establish her position expertly read disc. I love the fiery celebration from Fury. It's the kind of momentum that they really need to capitalize, turn that easy hold, not really an easy hold, but turn that, that quick hold into some defensive momentum, force the Revolution offense to, to stay out there as long as they possibly can. Well, goes up high and early. We talked about Rev Fury being a bit more of a level-headed team, not really rising up on the emotions of this game like Revolution will. But that's got to be something to just put put in the locker for Fury, you know? This is the clutch grabs coming out, making a name for themselves. As you see Serge Griffith there with the clipboard on the sideline. That's really the first like non-horizontal pull play that we've seen from Fury. I loved how Amel came up behind that isolated cutter, got that quick little dish, used her power position to put the disc up into to the air, and trusted that Dina Elamelik was going to come down with the disc, putting it in a place that only she could get it. Oh, Adele Karim with the big launch. It's going to be another look at the offense of Revolution. Again, favoring this more spread around hand. The set to begin with Chastain, far side, coming back on the field. Torres swinging across. Nice flip back. Inside to Volchuk. Sent back. Chastain hovering in the deeps. Ferrero, high release. Oh, and that's a miscommunication again. Volchuk. Doing something that the Revolution offense did not expect. And Kayla Helton popping it back to Nazarov. Austin surveying the options, sitting in the around. Now Dog and another off. Mark far away, able to release that backhand. Oh, and that's a shoot and score for Fury. They get one of the two required breaks back in this women's final. I think the hero of that point is uh, Marika Austin. She was able to keep the offensive flow moving along with that big under. She was unguarded. Fury was able to run their reset system again. She's hustling. I mean, the longer these points go, the longer the game goes, it feels like the better that Marika is able to play. She just, she truly is just like, finds so much joy in the, the grind and, and the, like, the competition of hotly contested movements. Well, the overhead shot there, you can see that play developing. Nazarov being so loosely marked by the Revolution offense and then just running straight through, setting up that play beautifully. And Amela Walda Kareem did a great job of just losing her defender. Her defender goes to help, notices, gets a big under, gets it right back. Just smooth, crisp offense from Fury. That's the Fury offense that we're used to seeing. And I love that it came from some defensive pressure. Volchak there, not connecting with her teammates, of course, having played in the PUL, Premier Ultimate League, the semi-pros for the women's division, alongside this Revo outfit. We'll be playing the USA club season, the pro season with 
brute squad. So a bit of a gun for hire. I'm interested to see how Lev Kowalczyk fits in with the brute squad systems. There's been a lot of roster turnover, and I think it's a, it's a good time for her to, to honestly try to play on that team. Defensively, her, her tight, you know, pressure defense is going to fit in very well into that system. And of course, Revolution having bested Brute last time out in the semifinals to advance to this gold medal stage. The tippity top of the women's championship. So Fury within one. And we'll be leveling up, of course, if we can get a block here. With, oh. Fury, with Fury's pod-based line systems, it's it's interesting to see how every point the matchups are different downfield. It's it allows you know Fury to pressure every one of these star players in Revolution just a little bit differently, and they have to figure out the puzzle every single point. Manuela Cardenas, far side, Valeria, Chastain hustling deep, Cartagena. Again, we're back to the patience. Chastain coming under. Desmond on the mark. Nice grab from Volchak. Throws herself at that one with a little scuff. Be a bit of turf burn on her knees this evening. Gardenas. Oh, that's a lovely sitter of a forehand around for her sister Torres now. The 41 year old doesn't look like it. It's like a spring lamb bouncing around here. Chastain now looking for the goal. Oh, and under the rolling pressure of Opie Payne, Manuela Cardenas holds on for dear life. Manuela Cardenas does such a great job sealing her defender. Opie Payne, one of the hardest matchups you could possibly have from making a play at the disc. You can see as Claire Chastain winds up for that backhand, she changes her hip position ever so slightly to take away a clean bit opportunity from Opie Payne. And I love the adjustment as well from Opie, seeing that that window had closed and trying to stop herself tumbling over the top of Cardenas. And you see the concern immediately looking to make sure that the matchup is okay, which I love to see. I like the... Kind of a, it felt like an intimate moment between Claire Chastain and Manuela Cardenas, two very close friends. Uh, Chastain able to convince uh, Manu to come play with her home club, Denver Molly Brown. So it, it was it was a fun celebration, a nice nice little embrace. It's to see the camaraderie um, and those connections built internationally in the same club with uh, with Revolution, uh, carrying over to the U.S. club season as well, but. It's a nice, nice celebration. I liked that. Well, this Revolution side is a team that love playing together, dancing together. They were all pretty good at dancing, but actually Luisa Sanchez is tipped as their best dancer. So if you can find her at the after party, that's one person to salsa with. Having played uh, Revolution in the Premier Ultimate League now twice uh, with uh, two different teams, uh, they always invite their opponents to join in and dance, and that is one skill set that I do not have. Well, I'll tell you who I'd love to see down there, especially because he's now wearing the snazzy bow tie off Mr. Tom Styles, is Evan Lepler, who said back in 2018 he'd do a fundraiser, because of course this Colombian side often having to ask community members and fans to help them achieve their journey to this world stage. So if we can convince Evan to get out there, I think we might be able to do it. But at the moment, the ones to do it aren't going to be fury for this point if they continue in this flow. But they're throwing into the defense. Manuela Cardenas puts on the invisibility cloak and rises to take the disc back. Shooting around to Mosquera. Oh, and good redemption. Backing each other up here on the field after those miscues. The pressure rising and temperature 
Cardenas again looking around. Montagna. Cardenas takes a little bump. The mark from Lorraine Guerin, who's having a heck of a game so far for Fury. Mosqueda now. The big fake from Young. Oh, an over dish over the top to Mosquera, but even she can't make the grab on that one. It was a tough, uh, tough throw for Mosquera because Mosquera, I think, thought that the disc, uh, that, that Aki Young was just going to do a pump fake. Uh, the disc was trailing away from her since she committed her hips away from the disc. I'm hoping that the, uh, the injury call from Elizabeth Mosquera is something minor, maybe a calf cramp or something rather than something serious. As she did just battle back from an ACL tear that she sustained last year in the Premier Ultimate League's playoff weekend. Massive respect to Carolyn Finney there, immediately just helping signaling the injury for Mosquera, making sure she's okay. But crawling off of the field, Mosquera and her pulls have been so impactful for this revolution side. Finney with the big laser backhand to Helton. Guerin dishing through. Hydra is going to put it deep and it's going to be taken away. The layout bid from Manuela Cardenas, but not sure Kayla Helton likes that much. It's a difficult play. Uh, Manu took a, took a pretty aggressive angle. Um, I can see that, that Kayla Helton's feeling frustrated with the line that, that Manuela Cardenas took because she was unable to attack the disc. It, seemed, it seems like she's, she's saying that Cardenas took a line that was, uh, that was not as uh, yeah, aware of her surroundings. Steps. If I was recklessly aggressive, or like dangerously aggressive or recklessly indifferent to your safety. Well, I don't think we're going to agree here. It doesn't look like we're agreeing, so let's contest and send it back. Are we happy with that? Not happy, but it'll, ha it'll work. Okay. Where's the disc? Well, the crowd's certainly making their opinions very obvious, but... Kayla Helton did have to stop on that play. She had eyes on the bid from Manuela Cardenas, making the huge athletic play. Are we going to finish the conversation? But it's going to be contested. I definitely can see what Michelle McGee was looking at. I don't think the disc necessarily came out with the edge that she was hoping. You could see that she drops her, she drops her shoulders. It looked like she was trying to put something flat, maybe inside out with a slight, like a different edge entirely than what it came out with, so that it would float out to space to Kayla Helton. But it was maybe rushed just a bit when she saw, you know, that deep space closing with Manu Cardenas. Well, going back to Michelle McGee. Put the big one out. Nice, easy stuff. Finney now is going to go for her own shot. That's going to sit and hang into the pocket. And a big play, but cannot deny the huge grab from Lorraine Guerin. Lorraine Guerin just announcing to the world why she belongs on a team like Fury. I, I'm, going to, I'm not going to lie, I've seen that, that type of athleticism from Lorraine Sky in the Pack so many times i'm just so glad that the rest of the world gets to experience it she is so humble about her athleticism that you know those types of planes plays to her maybe seem routine but 
I really hope when she watches back this, this play that she realizes how exceptional it is. I mean, she is in the world championship game, skying one of the best in the game. Well, talking about best in the game, that's a huge effort from Manuela Cardenas. Pausing the block. You can see how much this game means to her, that little punch of the air afterwards. Of course, nothing wrong with sending the disc back when two players in the field can't agree. It is one of those things about self-officiation. And, you know, when the game isn't close, it's pretty easy. You know, teams aren't having a lot of disagreements. But as the stakes get higher and higher, you know, it's it's not bad to, to disagree and it's not bad to send it back to the thrower. I've been giving a lot of compliments to Mosqueda's pulls, but that was a ripper from Helton. It's on the goal line. So the full stretch for Revolution having to go. A little stumble from Cardenas and a zone look from Fury. Trying to confuse the spaces around the disc with his tight movement. Chastain dishes to Cartagena. Just trying to slow down the pace of the Revolution offense. I love how much the offense switches between their positions here, Robin. Sitting behind the cup or the back set of four. A lot of teams will utilize, you know, three or four handlers. I mean, right now we're only C3 in the backfield for Revolution, but we're oftentimes seeing four or five, uh, which is allowing them to cycle into the backfield. Everyone on this Revolution team feels very comfortable with the disc in their hands, looking for small little spaces. And Fury just sitting in this zone, not having to melt to match yet. Of course, that's something that is very important when changing your defensive looks. But this elite level, they'll probably do it pretty handily. Rising through now, Volchak and Ferrero. Pinned to that far sideline. Oh, it's a low one, but well kept by Cartagena. Easy flow now, far sideline, taking advantage of the separation. Inches away from another goal, it's Alejandra Torres. Was there a save behind? No, there was not. Trying to sneak it over the shoulder. One of the, the detriments of having a handler system with four or five people behind the disc is when you get past the zone, there's not a lot of people to continue it. What could have been an easy goal with another one person in that, that deep space behind the, the cup could have translated to an easy score. Oh, and it's a big ripper backhand. Desmond, no one near. Now one on one in the end zone, but turns around. Dishing and going to Thompson. Cooper working in the near space, but it's gonna be a huge grab. No, it's not. I take it back. And the inside shot, Volchak already in acres of room. But something strange just happened. You know, Fury, uh, I think, stopped playing because it, it appeared that uh, Valeria Cardenas called a timeout on that block. And so it was, uh, it was unclear, uh, you know, to her teammates downfield, perhaps, just because it was a, a pretty quick call. It did look like that for a second, but the way she played on made me think I must have missed seeing. You know, they, uh, that Juliana Werfele huck downfield, that's, I think that's just classic Juliana Werfele. We got to see that when she played with Brute Squad uh, for a number of years. I feel like she, she shouldered a lot of those, those big backhand hucks for their defensive offense. Uh, it feels like I haven't gotten to see her really do that with the Fury offense yet. So it, it makes me feel like she has her same, you know, that same role, that same place on this team as well. And she really impressed the under 24s division back in Heidelberg as well. 
delight to watch her go to work with that team. With uh, the likes of Abigail Hecko and Claire Trope. Such fun young dynamics, dynamic athletes continuing to come out of the women's programs here in the States. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, Abby Hecko still has a whole nother cycle. I mean, Abby Hecko's another player, you know, playing for many or for years with Seattle Mixtape, moving over to the women's division, playing with Seattle Riot now, kind of making her international women's club debut at this tournament. Yeah, right, not having quite the same experience as they did back in 2018, taking that really convincing loss in the early stages against very capable sides, but still nice to see the big names out here. That zone from Fury tries to smother and contain the fast pace of Revolution. This cup is actually rotating when they're on that far sideline. Um, Claire Desmond is, is the mark, but as they swing to the sideline closest to the cameras on your screen currently on your right side, um, you can see that the cup flattens out and, and Claire Desmond is actually off of the disc. So they're trying to funnel it over. And once they get to the sideline, Desmond is flipping that mark and trapping the, the thrower on the field. Well, trying to use, uh, well, not so much the wind as an extra defensive ally. So, of course, that going currently on the overhead view, just directly from in front to behind. So the players shooting against the wind at the moment with Torres in the central position. Oh, she marshals. That one's going to go over the top and well taken out of contention by the defense. Cooper with the block. Lisa Cooper is a player for Fury who's been on the roster for a few years, but is really hitting her stride during this club championships. She's become more of a dynamic primary cutting option for the team. And she launches another high floaty pass out into the space. These teams making the same error as each other. An off disc foul call in the reset space between Anna Thompson and Claire Chastain. So Revolution, this is their offensive point. They've made Fury have to grind it out many times here in the second half. And just the players in white turning the screws here. Cardenas with the around, just sneaking it past Helton. And that's the goal, Yina Cartagena getting it. Rare goal to add to her stats tally. Usually, of course, seen on the assist side of the equation. I feel like in 2019, when Revolution came to the US Open, about the same time of year, uh, early in the US club season, she just took over in the US Open. And it's interesting to see her maybe not be the go-to receiver um, that she once was, but she's really fallen into that that central handler role, getting so many touches as this hex style offense has evolved. But hopefully they can clean it up on both sides. Big play there for Lisa Cooper. The immediate launch, giving the disc straight back to Revolution. But we're just grinding it out here. Fury haven't got any more breaks since that one when we took it to 9-10. Revolution just sailing, nudging in front. It feels as though the Fury throwers are underthrowing their deep receivers. And I don't know if it's because they're nervous about overthrowing them. Those mid-range shots up the middle, we saw it, you know, uh, a deep throw to Kirsten Johnson. We, we saw another one earlier in the game, kind of in the middle of the field a mid-range, you know, 30-yard or so throw flick coming out too hot and fast. But these longer hucks, I know that these throwers are more than capable of putting those out in front of their receivers. Um, and it makes me wonder, too, you know, being in the booth, protected from the elements, if, if we're not getting a good read on what the wind conditions really are on the field. 
Well, I can confirm the wind has officially disappeared as we have but one minute to go. So it's going to be a game to potentially 13, maybe 14. The scoreline, of course, being curtailed as these points started to get longer and longer. So points cap, of course, being 15, and that is a big shot. A lovely forehand towards the end zone, just shy. Punching it back, Payne is going to lead the pass, and that is a nice hold, quick and easy for Fury. So, in fact, we're not even going to get the cap turning on at that point. That's how fast and dynamic that offensive hold was. The end of that scoring run is exactly what makes a player like Carolyn Finney so high level. Many players would have ran back and thrown the goal across to Han Chen. But she is willing to hit Opie Payne in the middle to, to ensure that Kirsten Johnson can follow the play and get an easy score. Why give the Revolution defensive player an opportunity to make a bid on that throw to Han Chen when you can ensure the score by hitting that person in the middle who just happens to be Opie Payne? One of the things that quarterbacks are so renowned for, the ones that sit at the top of the standings anyway, is their ability to read the play in an instant. And that is what Finney has. She has that ability to assess the situation, not just the easy, obvious target in front, but to see the whole field as one and select the opportunities. And that score from Fury was by and far the shortest uh, score, I think, in the second half. So the cap will go on after this point. I'm really hoping that we can uh, get Fury to get this break so that we can be treated to a universe point game. Well, we'll have to see what becomes of this one. Valeria Cardenas on the charge. Chastain, target for the swing. Players in the backspace grinding under. Ferrero to Cardenas. That's a high one. You see the look over the shoulder from Cartagena as she runs that down. Ferrero and Cardenas working now together. Oh, that's going to have to be a lay from Valeria Cardenas, and it is. Everyone moving out of the way for her. Big bump on the mark. I don't know what it is, but after women tear their ACLs, they come back so strong. And I don't know if it's that fundamental shift in how people train and they learn about their body and what works best for them, but I've never seen Valeria Cardenas look better than she looks right now. Well, does she look good enough to put some gold medal around her neck? I don't know, but that's the high grab for Alejandra Uribe. And revolution, it's gonna be a game to 14. If Fury can just put in another clean, efficient, easy offensive hold, I feel good about that next defensive point. But it's going to take, I, I think, that, that clean, crisp Fury energy that we're used to seeing in order to make that happen. Well, Revolution's first and only opportunity to take this game away and emerge the victors on defense. It's going to be Mosquera with the ball, of course, as we see Sarah Griffith making some last minute tactical notes on the clipboard. Of course, one of the elite defensive matchups. The decorated career with Seattle's riot now, of course, coming across to Fury. Sad not to see her out on this hot turf, but she'll be adding lots of emotional and tactical aid to her team. Again, Fury continuing to use those pod-based lines. We're not seeing any sort of tightening or, or changes to that strategy. I mean, they've got their eyes on the, the whole season for them, which ends you know at the end of October. So this is very early days for them. And it's not been gold at the World Championship level for Fury since 2010 back in Prague. Can they go on the D-roll that's required to snag it? 
Now they're off with the low break to Rudin. Geren coming in, dishing. Nazaroff is going to release it high over the top. Anna Thompson underneath, and that is a delicious hold for Fury. We got treated to a centering pull to Anna Nazarov, seeing that signature inside break. I mean, classic Fury offense where Maggie Rudin comes in on the open side with that pump fake, turns direction, gets that kind of skinny inside break, gets the dish right back. I mean, we got to see, I mean, classic Fury offense with a very aggressive and expertly placed deep throw. Just look at the edge on that disc. It is just put perfectly where only Anna Thompson can get it. That Mish Phillips had no play on the line that she was taking to attack defensively. Yeah, the shaping on that is picturesque for Nazarov. Been playing for 19 years, older a longer playing career than perhaps some of the athletes here in this women's division formerly for San Francisco Zeitgeist and Blackbird before joining Fury and of course one of the alternates of the World Games in 2013 and 2022 it's lovely to see her cleated up and on the sidelines of the Team USA win in Alabama And she'd also like to thank her teammates on UC Berkeley Pie Queens for dog sitting. So two opportunities for Revolution, their first game point here in this gold medal matchup. We have both of the Cardenas twins on the field as Valeria pops to Manu. Volchak now. Saw her be so lethal in the semi final on offense for Revo. But she's missed a couple of her connections here. Can she travel the full stretch with the rest of her team? Ferrero popping to Cardenas. Moving around nicely and patient. This for the goal, but the error comes. Torres cannot claim that one. Being picked up by Finney. The far side of the field. Finney going to work and grinding. Mosquera with the rescue. And a timeout being called by Cartagena. It's really unfortunate that Marika Austin couldn't quite keep Mosquera on her. As Marika Austin clears that space in front of the end zone, Mosquera is lurking just off camera, ready to snag the disc out of the air to take that opportunity from Carolyn Finney. I mean, Carolyn Finney was so fired up after that defensive pressure, telling her teammates to push downfield, picking that disc up. So the second and final tie out for Revolution being called, and this could be it. This could be the moment where they claim the world title. They were so close in the semi, no, the final last time, back in 2018 when they took that silver to Seattle Raya indoors. The conditions very much not favoring the Medellin side. You can hear the spirit. It's Cartagena, Ina Cartagena coming back to pick up the disc. We talked earlier about how she was such an excellent target in previous seasons for Revolution. They seem to just trade between them the title of the best player in the world in the women's division. And I, again, I, the first thing I said about, about Fury was the spoil of riches that they have in their roster. And we didn't even talk about how, I mean, Revolution literally has players who are trading and, and contending for which one is actually the best player this year. And it's so hot here at the top and hot on the field as Cartagena looks for options around and squeezes one down the line to Volchuk. Torres with such emotion after their semi final rise against Ellipsis. Ferrero, all of the World Games players for Revo currently out on the field. Manuela thinking about the long shot to Mosquera but holsters. They don't need to make it the full stretch with a the pass. They have ground out. 
these points before Volchak. Ferrero casually in the upline space. Oh, lovely moves from Ferreria. Torres. A pick call is going to give us a brief moment of pause. I'm kind of thankful for that, that pick call because uh, I'm so nervous. There's so much energy. I mean, for both teams, there's, there's so much tension in this moment that I kind of needed a second to cool off. It could just be the heat, though. I'm not sure. Well, either way, Torres with a high loose ball. It's going to have to be collected, but it's going to be Michelle McGee with the swipe. Takes the credit card out and says, I'll pay for that. Thank you very much. Lorraine Guerin through to Finney. See her marshalling with the arm, pulling everybody under. She doesn't want to throw herself into a sudden death here. McGee. Shoots through. Shayla Harris. Stool count starting to rise. Hot pressure, pain collects. McGee. Moving across. Finney now. Oh, a lovely slicey dicey inside. And OP Payne keeps Fury's dreams alive. OP Payne coming up with a huge grab to save possession. You know, I think a lot of us focus on how much of a defender and a defensive just baller OP Payne is. But this again, her timing, her spacing, her field awareness on offense, it's it's second to none. And, and honestly, to have Carolyn Finney throw the goal to push us into kind of a sudden death scenario to OP Payne, I feel like it's it's really giving us our money's worth. Well, we asked for the full 29 points, but we'll definitely be very happy to see this one. Almost even Stevens Fury taking two breaks in this second half. Revolution, can they hold on for dear life here in this women's final at the World Ultimate Club Championships 2022? It's been such a fantastic week. We would be remiss to not thank all of the volunteers, all of the staff making it happen once again in Ohio. But at the moment, it was all about that loose disc. And Michelle McGee getting the opportunity. And the awareness of Carolyn Finney to call her teammates back under, get back into our system, start running our stack. You know, when other folks like myself probably would have made a terrible choice in that scenario, got to see what it means to be a world class athlete. So is it going to be high energy rising or is it going to be cool control that's going to win the day here? The do or die moments of this women's final. Slightly loose disc there to Valeria Cardenas, making our pulses rise up here in the booth. High dish from Cartagena. Montagna, these World Games athletes with the bronze last time in Alabama. The dirty gold as we lovingly referred to it. Can they get a shiny clean one here? Montagna dishes. Cartagena to Mosquera. The two recovered ACL injury athletes out here on the field. The hands being held on the far sideline by their teammates who can do nothing but watch as we see the brief moment for the pick. But back in. Dish across. Cartagena has two options available and running through with the confusion between the two. It's Nazarov with the layout. Anna Nazarov. Well, Philippe with the initial swing. And you can hear the energy starting to peak here. McGee. Thompson. This is lovely patience. Will the system pay off? Julia Werfeli 
lays a backhand to Desmond. Thinking about every pass, watching it into their hands. It's a big shot, hot pressure, and the tip, will there be the save? No, there won't. Oh my goodness. Well, we wanted to show Ultimate fans, and we have one right now. Ferrero able to get in the way of that pass and make it so that her offensive matchup was unable to have a second attempt, getting the disc all the way out of bounds. So we saw the confusion from the double undercut for Revolution, opening up the window for Nazarov initially. But it's going to be the full stretch once more. So you see an injury call and a replacement. After that incredibly clutch layout block, Ferrero takes a sub. Another look at that. What a great read and puts her body in the way, making sure the disc gets out of bounds. No second attempt. Well, we talked about opening the, win the door for Nazarov. That's a slam shut. As Cardenas winds up the backhand, Volchuk. Manu to Valeria. Oh, it's a big release up the back. Cartagena has a look at another. Has Mosquera poached. But a pick again as the Revolution athletes swirl around this field. The temperature rising in more ways than one here in Mason. Grinding it out, and there's the block, but the call of the foul from Manuela Cardenas. Claire Desmond was hot on the pressure shoulder there. It looked like Claire Desmond may have used a little bit of arms to hold Manuela Cardenas back. I'm wondering if that's what the discussion is focusing on right now. Well, an accepted foul on the field is the outcome of that discussion. Desmond trying to do all she can to win this one for her side. Hit call. Violation. Everyone's getting a bit too excited. As are you, I'm sure, right now. Cartagena dishing to Torres. Nice find for Volchak. Like a cascade, the cuts come. Small ball give and go. Volchak working under the hot sun and the mark of Kayla Helton. Oh, and just the frustrated error of Montagna. Payne going off to the races downfield now, coming under. Huge effort from Montagna, but gives the opportunity for OP Payne. Is this one going to be good underneath the battle? And it's going to be Manuela Cardenas coming through for the block, is denying Lisa Cooper the golden catch. I'm wondering if the disc came off a little bit higher than OP Payne was hoping it would. He likes the look. The wind maybe just caught a little bit of that. I mean, Lisa Cooper's playing so well this game. She's gotten up in some big moments thus far. I think that's a great matchup to throw to. Oh, Valeria Cardenas running through. Is that a hand block? Is that clean from wow. Kayla Helton? I don't think these players have any concern for our emotions right now as an audience. That's the way I like it, Hannah. That's the way I like it. So an accepted foul on the block from Kayla Halton. <laughs> Edge of the seat stuff here in this women's final. After in addition. Montagna now, she'll be well focused after that error that gave the opportunity. 
Watch that grinding the unders. Manuela Cardenas opens up to Mosquera. Is this the moment? It's not! That looked so good. That looked so good. What an effort from Elizabeth Mosquera. It is so difficult to move her as a receiver. I'd be hard pressed to think of an opportunity that I could like, ever in a game of this importance that I've ever seen someone overthrow her. What an effort to try to get a hand on that disc. We haven't seen more than two turnovers per point so far for both sides. We've had some with four total, but this is turning into a grudge match for the ages. The first time these teams have ever played each other in history in this historic stage. Nazarov looking around the poach off from Mosquera on the far side, trying to confuse the lanes. Oh, and in comes the block. Cartagena gets big, turns around, and that is gold for Revolution. Yina Cartagena coming through with the block. The bookends, the double happiness. And finally, they go one better. The energy in the crowd right now is electric. The world has gotten to see this club develop. You know, from the PAUC, the Pau the Pan American Ultimate Championships 2015, when we got to see the first international ascendance of the Cardinals twins all the way to silver medal at the World Ultimate Club Championships last cycle in 2018 through pandemic and finally capturing a gold medal with one heck of a performance. <laughs> well, pick yourself up the floor. If you've fallen off your seat, I wouldn't blame you because we were on the edge of it the whole time in that universe point. We talked about the jewel being set in the championship crown, but that was a dazzling, sparkling performance from these two teams. Yeah, okay, some gritty so D and some highlight reel execution. Said, like, it wasn't, uh, I, I said I couldn't. Nazarov with the under block oh, after the right. double cut confusion coming through huge. They couldn't quite make the most of it. Just elite athleticism here out on the field in Ohio, this Mason Atrium Stadium. The defensive pressure of this final point, capitalizing in a bookends celebration for Gina Cartagena. And in the moments, those big moments, the gasping ones where we thought it might all be over, Manuela Cardenas doing what she does best and tipping the disc out of the air. The miss for Mosquera. So rare, it looked like that was going to be. Oh, I think there were so many moments, Robin. In that point, we thought that was it, done and dusted. But it kept us guessing the whole time. Yina Cartagena finishing it off. Didn't even realize she was in bounds at first, but her teammates let her know and celebrating in indomitable style. What a women's final! have been delivered and the Colombian flag waving strongly in this wind that's just arrived back on the field. My oh my, what a way to finish off the World Ultimate Club Championships 2022. We're gonna get a reaction with Manuela Cardenas and Tyler Byram on the sideline. Manuela, what a win. Congratulations when this club was formed one of the intentions was to put Colombian Ultimate at the top of the world and showcase the best that this country has to offer. And now your team has done it. You're at the mountaintop. How does it feel? Uh, finally. Uh, we have been building this, this uh, for years. I've been in this team for 12 years. Uh, first thing I remember that Mauricio said, I created this team to be the world champion. Oh, we have been. 20, 2014, 2018 last year, and finally we get it. It has been like a long process, 
that started to sign juniors in 2010 when we win the first goal for Colombia. So it's had been a, a long journey. So I think we deserve it and we finally get it. Now, being able to, this last point, absolutely incredible display of ultimate. What can you just take me through those last couple of possessions? You getting the incredible D in the end zone to save the game and then you guys being able to punch it in. Yeah, I mean, I remember the first turnover and I was like, I'm not going to let that happen again. And I was like, that's not going to happen today. We want this so much. And I know it's gonna, it's gonna, we are gonna get it. And I, I had that in my mind all the time. I surely was nervous over there, but that's everything that I have. I was just had my hand. I was like, have so much trust in this team, in this process, and I know that we're gonna get it. In the first half, you guys fell down by three points, two breaks by Fury, but then your coach called a timeout. What was discussed in that timeout? <laughs> it was like that happened four years ago. Do you remember that? That happened four years ago, do you remember that? And we started to slow down against Ryo. And he was like, yeah, that already happened, so let's play, so let's play our game. The one that was nervous, that had fear, that have so many feelings, get that over and let's play our game. And I think we showcase an amazing ultimate over here. We show how much we love this process. We, we show how much we have been working for Colombian ultimate. So it was amazing final, just as a dream. Now, I know you your team loves to party. What's that after party going to be like tonight? Okay, go to my Instagram. I'm going to post. We have an after party Colombian party. So go there. And can I say some hi to my family? Mama, Papa, Miguel, Joan, Familia. Los amo mucho para todo el último colombiano. Gracias. Thank you, Manuela. Hannah, back to you. And as Manuela Cardenas will thank her family for their support, we have to thank these two teams for giving us such an incredible women's final. Manuela Cardenas will have a gold medal to match the headband. The belief was so strong. Last year, Colombia Revolution ruined my emotions after the game a little bit, seeing them with the silver back in 2018. I had the pleasure of watching the 2010 match that Manu mentioned there from the stands. We're delighted to see here in this final revolution rising, ascending in those crucial moments after going those three points down. The hero blocks coming as they started to get the appetite up. Fury with an exceptional performance, making those clutch grabs, that strange knee grab score that seems about a decade ago to us here. But in those final moments, the block's coming. But Robin, how would you summarize this game with your technical wizardry? Amazing. We were treated to one of the most amazing games I have ever seen. I can't be more thankful to have been in the booth with you, Hannah. It's been a pleasure to bring you this game, this women's final. In the end, it was Colombia. We're going to have a post-game analysis, the first of these three finals. We need to talk about this matchup between these two teams. But eventually, it's Colombia that did it. Fury tried their very best to come back in the final stages, but it was just too much pink and gold out there on the field. They advance and finish this one off for us, 14 to 13, to the team from Medellin Revolution. Coming you back after truly an instant classic, an epic of epics. Revolution makes history and wins a world championship for Medellin, Colombia with Tom Stiles and Katie Killebrew. I am Evan Lepler. We are all still 
covered in goosebumps after that. I think it's fair to say the revolution is complete. They are world champions. Katie, put in perspective. I'm just such a fan of Ultimate and to be able to get to experience that game here at the World Games in the midst of the crowd with the cheering. It was a true roller coaster of a last point and I still feel a little bit shaky and just almost surreal. Like the light, the light is so bright it almost feels like a dream to be in a situation like this. Tom? Yeah, uh, when that last shot went up to Mosquera down the line, I jumped off off my chair, started screaming, and then didn't quite grasp it. But to see them put it in, we've watched this young team grow and develop over so many years. And Fury came to the party as well. They threw everything into this game. It was incredible to watch, but congratulations to Revolution. Richly deserved. There's going to be an hour-long documentary made about that last point that was played that included six turnovers just back and forth both teams had so many chances as we take you through all the madness it began with mad dog the legend of fury ultimate getting the layup block but then her shot to the end zone the other way landing incomplete revolution just would not give an inch for Rero getting it back such excellent defensive play there i was in awe the entire time and then just making sure on that second effort so good there the, the yeah. crowd were reacting to everything that, that happened on the field as well and that was the most exciting thing was just having the crowd buzzing and shouting uh, it, it was just amazing atmosphere and you only get that at these big world championships to see these players perform under that spotlight was spectacular and look it's the other big hat Mauricio's here as well. We'll get, we'll, we'll get to Mauricio in just one second. Let's watch the end of the point. It could have been sensational. Mosquera came up empty, and yet Revolution just would not be denied. The crowd on that was absolutely incredible. And they saw uh, Cartagena run through and get a position on that, and then back into the end zone for the score. Brilliant action. Uh, Win the crowd, and you will win your championship. Mauricio Moore joining us here after the culmination of what you've been working on for, what, 15 years, 20 years? 17, 17 years. That was, I mean, being world champion was our first target from the first day. Like, from the first time we started with Revolution, that was the thing that we, that we decided to do. Like, uh, try to be the best team in the world to give that opportunity to all women in our country to have a, a high level, high spread team and that would make ultimate free to grow up in our country. Four years ago you were so close. Oh God, yeah. <laughs> and I mean, five years ago in Poland you were so close. What got you over that hump to gold? Well, um, and we talk about that last night a lot. It, um, sometimes we just lose the path and we start to see, and we start to, believe or think that this is, this is about a medal, about a winning championship, and it's not. I mean, you know, this is so fun and we are so happy, but you know, tomorrow in, a, in about a week, you actually kind of forget it. Like, you know, the, the thing that, you know, the medal is going to be in your door, but the experience you live through, like coming back from this hard moment of a team, like I'll let make come kind of a lot of mistakes and then like, okay, come back, you know, like, like every step for every player uh same as uh, jimena or any player had a mistake and then like it's okay i mean you need to come back and it's a fight but the fight is not against the other team and it's not in either the tournament it's just a fight against us like ourselves i was super stressed <laughs> you know that was the most stressful game ever in my life <laughs> we were stressed on the sideline we were stressed for you we were stressed with you what does it feel like to be able to like watch that back yeah i mean at some point i was thinking we're gonna win anyway, though. I mean, I was super stressed, you know, like, oh, really? Second again? I'm not gonna do that. And then it was like, um, it was that feeling about, we, like every player is inside of the field doing their battle and they were playing fantastic. So they earned and they deserve a win. So I'm so happy for that. For that. 
Oh, we, we, we saw, saw her on the sideline side being, being interviewed there, there. Manu, and oh, obviously, obviously her twin sister, sister Valeria. We've, We've seen them rise, rise through the world, the world of Ultima as superstars, superstars from the age of 15, really, on the world stage. Just tell, Just tell me about, about your experience coaching them and, and sort of seeing, seeing them take this monumental, monumental rise, rise through the sport. Through the sport. Uh, they, they both are, uh, they're, they're beautiful. Um, I remember when they, get it to the, they came to the team at nine, and it was a fantastic feeling because they are so competitive. They compete each other in everything. And it was so amazing to have them in the team and the same team trying to help each other, but at the same time compete each other. So that's something that I've, I've never seen before. So 14 years later, after they joined the team, they win a world championship. 17 years after you start this goal. How many years did that final point take off your life? Oh, God. <laughs> Well, you know, I actually say something to the team just right at the end of the game. Say, like, you know, we make it, we're world champions, but this is just starting. This is just the beginning. I mean, this is a beginning of a big thing, uh, and it's about to be professional, like trying to raise up female ultimate as a professional sport. And we are fighting so hard for that. And we are doing that with Revolution every single here you know like we're trying to transmit to promote to make girls get interest to play ultimate in the highest level possible because having that level it's a is the possibility to have um the opportunity to let's say to feel that kind of experience that you cannot feel in any other situation you know like what we feel there you cannot feel that in another place you know so we are so into bring professional ultimate female and the world and that's what we want to be this tournament and that's the message we want to send to the people I asked you before the world games Mauricio what winning that event would do for your country in terms of ultimate in the future and this is not the world games but I'm sure it doesn't feel any less sweet right now uh, what does this mean for Colombian ultimate going forward? Joining the club of gold medalists at WCC, you're only the fourth different country to win a gold medal at the World Games. USA, Canada, Japan, and, uh, and Colombia. <laughs> That's beautiful. Not just, uh, you know, like that, that medal and this medal, and I represent something. I'm so proud about Colombia coming up, air, like with all the teams, like actually all of the like girls teams who came here, like Aerosol or Bamboo and Lat Septima, those teams, men's teams are coming. Like I think we are trying to bring uh, to our country the highest level possible and try to push our teams to be that level and you know like keep growing up. I saw you enjoy a moment with Aleja at the end of that. <laughs> Can you speak to your relationship with her and how you and her have gone on this oh, ultimate right. journey together? It's so hard to coach her, you know, like, because sometimes I'm just going to put her out uh, or that kind of a things, and then you feel kind of a bad, but at some point it's your job as a coach. So, and, but the good thing is she's so obedient, she's so good, and she's a leader. She always works for the team. Even if she's, not, if she's in or if she's out, she's always trying to work with the team. So I feel so proud how she how she grow and how she may grow this sport in Colombia. She was the first person pushing for sports for women, so I, 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 I'm so proud for that. You have no hair? Uh, uh, <laughs> this is, um, no, I don't have hair because it's too hot. <laughs> it is very humid here, but I think maybe, maybe that played to your advantage today, yeah. being used to this. You know, it was fun. I mean, being hot all the time is fun. You know, like, running and, and, and keeps you with the energy. What was it like battling against Fury for 27 points of high level back and forth ultimate? Neither team played their best, but I think the opponent and the defense had a lot to do with it. He's a really good coach also. So um, I, I talked to him like, okay, it's the first time. I, I finally beat you though. So, <laughs> uh, but it was so good. I mean, having that team in front is so good because we are so friends. It's the first time that the two, two teams have ever faced each other. But I imagine you... Seven years ago. Seven years ago. Uh, and they say, you're going to come back, you're going to be so good, you're so young. Like, come on, Matt, don't do that to me. But then, you, and then I said, like, okay, we came back. And, we're, and, we, came, and we get better.
I think it was a great, a great match. Uh, both teams made a lot of mistakes, our team and their team, but I think it was a great and a fantastic game, I think. Right, your team is about to get its gold medal, so you should go and do that. Congratulations, you, Luis Atacionis, amigo. You were there when uh, we get this first U.S. Open. And I, I always remember that, that moment when you say, Colombia has made it, and wow, we did it again. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you, Mauricio. Muchas gracias. What a scene. It's really a thrill to talk to him. I mean, he has literally changed the world from an ultimate standpoint, focusing on women's ultimate. He brought high-level Americans down to Medellin in the late 2000s and kind of began that pipeline. And this is the result. Decade and a half later, they are world champions. For me, there are just no words. I think that this whole experience of Worlds has been really special. And seeing women grow, I was like, I'm not going to get through this interview without crying. If you know me at all, I'm definitely a highly emotional person. But um, if you can't feel this and see those stats and realize what a fantastic game we saw today, I don't know what you were watching, but it was fantastic <laughs> from here. Well, it was incredible drama. Each team finished with the same number of turnovers, the same number of breaks. But Revolution was one point better. And certainly Fury had their chances, Tom. I mean, this is one that they're going to look back on as one that got away. That's for sure. But it's Revolution's day and the crowd got what it wanted. Well, I think both sides had their opportunities. Both sides will look back on the tape and, and realize that they could have got it done and, and got it done quicker, but it doesn't matter. I think this is about the story. It's about the event. And what a, what a brilliant way to finish a fantastic week here in Cincinnati with the crowd cheering, uh, the pink shirt streaming onto the field, and the, the crowd favorite, the team from Colombia winning the gold medal. And, you know, Fury have done nothing to, to sort of uh, to disappoint. You know, I think they've they brought a spectacle. It wouldn't have been a close game unless there were some mistakes from both sides. Uh, and they fought so hard at the end to get it back onto Universe Point. I think there's, they've got a lot to be proud of. But um, a brilliant story. I'm, I'm so pleased to see uh, Mauricio and uh, the whole revolution team take away that gold medal let's watch these women get their gold medals you think about how many times they've been in the mix I mean, back in london wgc they were in the women's final and just did not have enough i mean the cardenas twins were 17 years old at the time uh i think they weren't even 17 they were about to turn 17 they were just 16 unbelievable yeah they had their 17th birthday the week after that final and they just didn't they didn't have the depth uh, in that event but their depth has grown and they've used those big players as inspirations uh, and you know here to hear Mauricio talk about growing women's ultima I think he's he's shown what through what he's done uh, in Colombia through what the revolution team have done to just grow the sport it, it's possible Colombia weren't a superpower on the ultimate map, and now they are a world player, and everybody should go into a game fearing them. And like he said, they, they have so much more depth now, not just on this Revolution team, but bringing multiple teams from Colombia here to the World Games. It has been a delight to watch all of the teams, but especially the spirit from Colombia. Well, that's a wrap for the 2022 World Ultimate Club Championships. And every time you come to these events, you expect to witness history. And we were privileged to be in these chairs on the sidelines, burning under the sun, cherishing this experience. And I have the honor of signing off on behalf of our entire crew. Too many names to mention, but it has been a thrill and an honor of a lifetime. Congratulations to Mixtape and Pony and Revolution for Tom and Katie. I'm Evan. This has been Worlds. So long from Cincinnati.